So if you look at the planet uh, star systems and look at those, three of them are detected by direct imaging, one by tram transit timing and one by radial velocity. So it is also important for you to uh, understand uh, the deep sky objects in all wavelengths. Uh, usually planet detection is within the infrared submillimeter range, but you can detect, you can even, you can uh, study the atmosphere of a, of a planet uh, in x-rays because that you can see those emissions coming uh, off from the parent star and see how they're affected by the surface of the planet. So all wavelengths are important in, in not just detecting, but in get, learning the characteristics of the particular individual exoplanets. And um, so not all of those infrared submillimeter uh, missions are telescopes in space. Some of them are ground-based, again, uh, ALMA in Chile, uh, Mauna Kea in Hawaii, if you get high up enough above the interference from infrared emissions from the Earth itself, then you can collect some really good infra uh, infrared detail information to tell you about uh, and even detect planets around stars. I think Spitzer was the first uh, mission to actually detect an exoplanet and was the first to detect temperature and winds in the comp composition of an atmosphere around an exoplanet. Kepler, of course, uh, de detected more than 4,000 possibilities, and more than 1,000 of those have been confirmed as exoplanets. So it is a cooperative effort among all wavelengths. Um, and exoplanets can form around any planet. No, it does not matter what their mass is. They can form around very massive planets. They can form around very cool planets. They can form around brown dwarfs that are substellar. And they're, um, I don't think I've seen one actually orbiting a white dwarf yet. I'm not sure. I will have to look at it. Um, so uh, the only difference being, of course, that the more massive the star, the more copious the, the high energy radiation, and the more difficult it is to detect something as small as a planet. So most of the exoplanets are found around the, the lower end of the mass range of stellar objects. As far as the HR diagram goes this year, um, most of the emphasis, emphasis, of course, is on those protostars. Um, being the three types of protostars, the T-Tauris, the FU Auris, and the Herbig AE objects, uh, um, as they drop, just before they drop onto the main sequence, uh, they are still the protostar, so they're just above the main sequence, and of course the Herbig uh, objects would be further out because that's spectral type um, B and A, and then the uh, T-Tauris are uh, sort of like F through M, and the uh, FU Ori, which is that special case of the T Tauri, is hovering right around that two solar mass range um, on the HR diagram. And, it, and of course, as you can see, they all have their own light curves because they vary very differently as they um, in the protostar range when they drop onto the main sequence. Uh, these uh, HR diagrams, the one on the lower loop, Upper um, left shows protostars of certain masses and their path that they take along the HR diagram until they drop onto the main sequence. Uh, the one in the lower left shows uh, someone has drawn in the path of a brown dwarf, and you can see it approaches the main sequence but never quite makes it. And then it shows a, a Jupiter mass planet. Um, a 0 .00 Jupiter mass planet and shows that that never does come close to the main sequence. Um, and on the right is the luminosity classes, but what I like about this particular one is that it shows the L and T spectral classes for the brown dwarfs to show where they, where they belong on the HR diagram. So, of course, with dealing with exoplanets and um, protostars and brown dwarfs, um, that is an, an important part of the HR diagram this year. So again, here is a normal 
more normal HR diagram that you're used to seeing, it only goes down to spectral class M. Um, but remember, uh, exoplanets can form anywhere uh, on, on the HR again, uh, around any of those stellar objects on the HR diagram. And there are cooler spectral classes that you do not see. Once again, spectra, uh, spectra is on the astronomy event every single year without fail because, of course, that's how we know everything we know about stars and how we know about a lot of exoplanet information also. Uh, spectra on the lower right-hand side is a uh, spectra of the atmosphere around an exoplanet and shows uh, the molecules that uh, the methane and the water and the carbon dioxide uh, that are there in the atmosphere and how much of it is in the atmosphere. And of course, the radiation laws that we have every year, Planck's law, which basically says that every that a hotter star emits radiation, uh, more radiation at every wavelength than a cooler star. Uh, Wayne's law that basically says that every star uh, emits radiation with a most of its radiation at the maximum wavelength, and that that is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the 7 divided by t. And then we have Stefan Boltzmann's law, which basically um, is equal to the area under the curve, um, the black body radiation curve. Uh, and is uh, the result uh, in actually is the total power put out for the star, which is related to it, the, the, the surface, the, the, the area of the surface and its temperature. Uh, and it's also related to its luminosity, which again is related to its radius and its temperature. 